In previous videos, I've discussed how atomic and molecular structures are based on wave mechanics, which define orbitals. The Schrodinger equation, which describes these wave mechanics, can be solved approximately to give the probability densities and energies of these orbitals. So by understanding atomic orbitals and how they can interact, we can gain insight into molecular formation. And from this, two useful theories emerge, valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory. Valence bond theory views molecules as formed from interacting atoms that retain their original characteristics. Whereas molecular orbital theory explains that electrons occupy molecular orbitals formed by the overlap of atomic orbitals. And both these theories are crucial, but one might be more useful or suitable than another depending on the specific situation. But before going into these theories, I will start with a simpler yet useful method for describing the arrangement of valence electrons in molecules, Lewis structures. Lewis structures use elemental symbols to represent the nucleus, and dots to represent valence lone pairs, and lines to represent valence bonds. The primary purpose of Lewis structures is to visualize the bonding between atoms and the presence of valence lone pairs of electrons. In a Lewis structure, each dot represents a valence electron, and each line mainly represents a pair of shared electrons, forming a covalent bond. For example, in the Lewis structure of water, the oxygen atom has six valence electrons, and each hydrogen has one. Oxygen shares one electron, with each hydrogen forming two covalent bonds. The remaining four electrons on oxygen are represented as two lone pairs. I also quickly want to mention the reason we have this bent shape for water is because the lone pairs repel hydrogens yielding a more energetically stable bent shape, but I will explain this concept further in our later videos. Anyway, another example is nitrogen gas or N2. Each nitrogen atom has five valence electrons and you will notice that they have three singular electrons. So to achieve a stable configuration, they share three pairs of electrons forming a triple bond. The Lewis structure for N2 is down the bottom here. Lewis structures can also help identify radicals, which are species with an unpaired singular electron. So for example, the Lewis structure of this methyl radical I have here shows carbon with seven electrons and one of which is unpaired. And so you can see the radical. So in summary, Lewis structures provide a clear and concise way to represent molecular structures, indicating how atoms are bonded and where lone pairs of electrons are located. This visual visualization aids in understanding the bonding and reactivity of molecules. So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. Until next time.